Peace everyone, Unmaskard here, and welcome back to the uh, self-portrait self colored pencil live stream, if I can, if I can talk today. Um, so anyways, like I said uh, yesterday, today I'm going to be focusing on filling in the dark stripes of my shirt here, and hopefully I can get through it all today. So welcome back everyone that's been enjoying the series so far. Hello, Paulo. What do you mean, no sound? There's no sound? I see sound. There is sound, right? Hey there, uh, Sandri, Cece, Ulrich. Okay, there is sound. <laughs> don't don't scare me like that. You can't you can't say the uh, first thing in the live stream. You can't tell me there's no sound. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna get into coloring now since I know that there's sound. Um, hey there, Lindy, uh, Marshall, Sneaks, uh, Datu. Uh, hopefully, I didn't miss anybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you lovely people. I'm going to start coloring now. Nice nice way to start the live stream with a, a mini panic attack. Having, uh, having technical difficulties is always my least favorite thing uh, about live streams. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be so bad if I could blame somebody else for it, but since I control everything, it's yeah. It only comes down to one person, and I can tell you, my my boss would not be uh, happy with that. Hope everyone had a lovely Tuesday. Um, mine was uh, mine was quite nice. Uh, let's see. After after I streamed yesterday, the self portrait. I went over on Patreon and streamed for a bit, uh, working on our lion project, and it's coming together very nicely. We'll probably have two more weeks of that project uh, if I don't rush anything, but we, we got some of the fur done on it and it's coming together really, really nicely. A lot of people are enjoying it. And then uh, thanks to the, the conversation yesterday, uh, I finally came up, I finally decided, I didn't really come up with it, but I finally decided on the project that we'll be doing for the colored pencil tutorial over on Patreon. And that is going to be a, a really colorful, like blue and purple and pink uh, beta fish. So that's that's going to be the project, and we will start that tomorrow. So if you want to uh, join in on that project and follow along, uh, be sure to sign up over on my Patreon page. I've gotten a few. A few new uh, patrons this this past week, so thank you all again very, very much for, for coming over and, and signing up. I look forward to seeing you in the live streams over there. And, uh, yeah. And then after, finally, after I finished work for the day yesterday, it was a pretty long day. Lots of, lots of streaming. Uh, I tell you what, the... The, the daily live streams, they are so fun, but they are equally as tiring. They, they really are. Um, I mean, when you, when you set yourself up to stream every day, you, you kind of have to plan the rest of your life around your streams, and it does get, uh, does get pretty exhausting. Uh, two weeks in? Yeah, yeah, so we're two weeks in now. So we're ha halfway done with the month, uh, which means 
My wife and I are halfway done with our uh, very strict whole food diet. No sugar, no oil, and no processed food for the month of May. And I gotta be honest with you, at, at this point, it doesn't even feel, it doesn't even, I don't even remember like what food we used to eat. Like it just seems so normal now to just fry things with no oil and to not eat any flour or anything like that. So it, it's um, kind of come full circle. I, I imagine that a lot of our habits that we're going to create this month with our food choices are going to stick around uh, after this month. So uh, we'll just uh, move on to a slightly healthier lifestyle uh, after this after this month. And I, I, I suppose that uh, that's the best best goal I could have hoped for uh, with our little uh, challenge, I guess, if you want to call it a challenge. It was, it's been somewhat of a challenge, for sure, but a good one. Um, and then also yesterday, uh, played like a ton of video games with my sister, uh, played some PUBG together, and that's, that's always fun. But that was that was the extent of my the rest of my Tuesday. Um, so I'm sorry to hear that, Cece. Yeah, never, never want your work to be, to be awful. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, now would be a really, really good time to start asking them. Because I, I don't really have a whole lot going on today. Oh, hey there, Chrissy. Good to see you. I'm trying to think if there was any questions that I had gotten uh, yesterday that I might have not answered. Been getting, uh, I've been getting a number of questions about my pencils. And in particular, one question that has popped up uh, a few times now is this, this whole idea of oil-based pencils. And I've explained it a, a couple times already during, during these uh, self-portrait live streams, but the, uh, the difference between the luminance or prismacolor wax-based pencils versus the polychromos uh, oil-based pencils is not that one... It, it, there's really no difference, and I'll explain it one last time, and, I, and then I think I'll just keep ignoring the question, because um, I think this is like the third time I've answered it. Um, they're made of the same stuff. It's not like uh, the pencils we refer to as wax-based pencils don't have the oil that uh, polychromos have. It's the ratio between the oil and wax that changes. And as you, as you increase the amount of oil, the pencils become more dense, so the less, less soft, and they also become more translucent. But other than that, you can treat the pencils exactly the same. You can blend them with solvent, you can mix them together, everything is exactly the same. So you can completely disregard the idea that somehow 
oil-based pencils, which isn't even really a thing. There's really no such thing as oil-based pencils. They're still just wax, but they have a higher concentration of oil in them. They're just more oily than other pencils. Um, but you can treat them all the same. So just, just know that. Pass it on to your friends. And then maybe I will eventually stop getting the same question regarding whether or not you can do to polychromos as you can do to prismacolor and luminance. Um, do I have any YouTube videos regarding on how to draw feathers and fur? Actually, yes. Um, well, I, I have, I, I might have done a shortened time-lapse slash narrated tutorial, if I'm not mistaken, but I literally have a video, uh, fur versus feathers. Um, so you should be able to find that. It's probably like a 10, 15 minute, uh, narrated tutorial. And I break down like the differences and that, the, the texture differences to creating those two distinct textures. Uh, but over on Patreon, a couple years ago, I did a project of a bird standing next to a cat. And the entire concept of the project was the difference, the different approaches between coloring feathers and coloring fur. Uh, because I, I've had that question a few times in the past, and so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to draw a cat right next to a bird, and we're just going to talk about fur and feathers. And if I'm not mistaken, I did upload the uh, like the time lapse version of it, but I break down the key concepts in that I went over in the live lesson. Um, is there anything you dread working on when it comes to colored pencils? Um, n not really. Well, maybe animals. Um, in particular, like, like dogs and cats and, um, I, I don't really like doing wildlife all that much. It's not my favorite subject. And... Uh, the reason I don't really like doing wildlife is because it's the same exact thing over and over again. When, when you learn how to do fur, then it's always the same. The only thing that changes is the colors. And it's, it's, it's not very exciting for me. Uh, it's not much of a challenge. I, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to say that wildlife is easy. Um... And it, it, so it doesn't interest me as much because it's far less of a challenge for me. Uh, I have to reiterate that this is a, a personal thing. It's not, wildlife is not going to be easy for everyone. And in fact, it might be the most challenging for many people. Um, what, I, what I find challenging is what I enjoy doing the most. And... Um, so that's, that's why, uh, I dread doing wildlife most of the time, uh, with colored pencils. Uh, it's, it's actually a bit different with pastels because I can actually work faster with pastels. So it's less of a headache, but, um, r regardless, I, I just, uh, yeah, I prefer to avoid I prefer to avoid wildlife with, uh, with colored pencils. Uh, I can see your color charts. Uh, you should frame them. Yeah, I, I would, um, I would frame them if I didn't always tear them down off the wall to look at them. Cause I, I, when I'm, when I'm doing my planning process for my projects and in, in fact, to this one here, uh, I just pulled my big color chart off the wall, um, preparing for, for this live stream and, and, um, 
So I, I like to just uh, have them easily removable. But the, the downside is they get kind of warped a little bit. What I've been wanting to do, uh, I've been wanting to have them mounted onto, you know, maybe like a piece of foam board or something. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I, I need to do my other color chart. My wife even uh, said that she'd help fill in the squares. Um, but uh, the color chart for all of my pastel pencils, I, I've been wanting to do that. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Because just like I sell my master chart on for colored pencils on my website, I've I've been wanting to do the same with my pastel pencils. Uh, just put together a, a quick master chart and then throw it up on my website for people. Because I was kind of surprised that of so many people that bought my colored pencil color chart, I, I thought it was a bit, you know, it, it was it, it's, it's not something that I would have ever bought in my lifetime because I like to make my own color charts. So um, I was kind of surprised at the number of people that that wanted to buy it. Has any of your art pieces gone wrong? Like so wrong it's not worth saving? Uh, yeah. Um, there's this one uh, pastel project that I did of a, like a, a wood elf, and I did it on, um, what was the paper called? Uh, I did it on the Canson Mitenta paper, and... I tried to fix it on a live stream uh, like a while ago because I really liked the reference photo, but for some reason when I was when I was working on the project, uh, I was getting really frustrated because I couldn't get the pencils to to look right. I couldn't get the skin, the face to look right. And eventually, as far as the the project went, I was like, okay, well, I'm just I'm just gonna call it done here because I I don't know what's going on, but I just can't get the face right. And it was uh, actually like my first attempt at a pastel portrait. And then I came back to it like a year later and did a drawing journal live stream trying to fix it because I. I figured, oh well, you know, I'm I'm much better uh, with pastels and uh, even pastel portraits because I've done several since then, and so I was like, well, I'll figure. I, I figured I'll just fix this project now that I I'm better at pastels and I have a much better understanding. And I was trying to fix it during the live stream, and again, I was having the same issues. the The pencils weren't showing up, and they uh, I was just you know, wearing out my pencils, but the paper, the, the color, it wasn't changing. It was just staying the same very faded look, and, and the paper wasn't taking any of the, the pastel. It wasn't sticking. It was just kind of dusting off. And I couldn't understand what the problem was until I realized that I wasn't using pastel mat. I was using uh, the Canson Mitenta touch paper and then it, it it dawned on me that that's that's the problem the problem is that I is that the paper uh, doesn't work well and so I had to uh, just chalk it up as a complete and utter failure 
And so that's about as wrong as a, a piece has ever gone. Uh, there was another, there was a colored pencil project that I'd done a long time ago of a bear. Um, and it wasn't so much that it went wrong, it's just that I never finished it. But I didn't, I chose not to finish it because I hated the picture in the first place. Like, I, as I was working on it, I, I got really, you know, I, I got it done to a point. I got it done to a point, but I never shared a, a final picture of it or uh, shared a time-lapse video of it or anything like that because I just absolutely despised the project. I just, you know, sometimes you find a reference photo that you're like, oh, I really like this reference photo, and you want to work from it and recreate it. And then for some reason when you recreate it, you just hate it. Um, even though you might capture it half decent, um, you just you just look at it and you don't want anything to do with it. And that was essentially the result of... Uh, Oh man, I was afraid of that happening. This is the this is the price I pay for for talking. Okay, well let's see let's see how much uh, let's see how much I can erase. wasn't wasn't paying attention at all. I knew that I, I as soon as I finished it I was like wait a minute that doesn't look right and it's because it's not right I was like why why does this gap look wrong all right come on needed eraser don't fail me now this isn't supposed to be colored in that's the wrong stripe. I wasn't I wasn't paying attention. See the this stripe comes up. It, it this this is dark, and then this fold bumps the stripe up to there. And I was thinking the stripe continues because I wasn't paying attention, and I was talking about. Uh, ironically, I was talking about uh, a artwork that has just not worked. And here I am making quite possibly an unforgivable mistake because of how much colored pencil I put into the wrong stripe. Lesson lesson learned. Uh, fortunately, I'll I'll be able to erase this enough because um, the secondary stripe is actually just a light gray color, which is almost identical to what this is going to look like right now as I erase it. But for uh, future references, so that you avoid this mistake and you never make this mistake on your your uh, coloring. This is what I recommend doing. Finding your dark stripes, putting loose X's in them, so that you do not do this to your artwork. See, it's supposed to be this one, and then this one, and this one, this one here, and this one here, and this one, and this one. And this one. 
and to this. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is how you should do it. So you don't make that error that I just made. All right, this arm over here is difficult. Uh, let's see. This stripe here. So that means this one and yes this one this here oh, okay um Uh, Canton Me Tenta Touch does not have two sides. It will be fine. Um, like I said, this uh, this shade of gray that I am creating as I erase is actually lighter than the the shade of gray that I will be applying here. Uh, secret to erasing colored pencils to the to the best is to not apply pressure. Uh, applying pressure is actually the wrong idea. Usually we would consider, uh, you know, pushing really, really hard, you know, trying to dig the color out of the paper. But uh, the real secret is, is just use a very, very light pressure. Let the eraser itself do the work because the harder you press, the less uh, you're going to be able to cover it later on because you're going to be, you know, uh, denting the, the paper, so you don't want to do that. It will be fine. That's uh, fairly light. Really, really light, so... Let your kneaded eraser get in all those little spots on the paper and then just slowly roll it up. There we go. That will work. That will be good enough. All right, let's, um, let's fill in the right space, shall we? Uh, good morning, Danny. Good to see you. Oh, and uh, Tessa, I didn't see you come in. And uh, Gillette. If you end up flattening the tooth, you could always use touch-up texture. Yeah, I, I could, but I th it will be okay. It will be fine. I'll have one. I'll have one of my lighter gray stripes done for the day.
I wouldn't be human if I didn't make mistakes, so all is good. Uh, honestly, it couldn't have happened on a better subject in a better location. Because one, nobody's going to be really looking at my right bicep. And two, my shirt is already very, very dark. Uh, so the mistake will easily be correctable. Since the, the stripe, that is the color of the stripe. Uh, it's just a lighter gray color, so it will work out perfectly fine. I have no concern whatsoever. I usually, I usually use little X's to mark my stripes, but uh, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking. So don't let yourself not think in the future. Uh, if you're doing a striped shirt, take the time to mark your stripes. Because it's very, very easy to get them uh, mixed up. I've done it. I, I've done it several, several times, so. Take care, CC. Headed to bed, I presume. Yeah, there you go, snakes. That's the kind of positivity I like. You, you actually got two lessons out of it. How to avoid making mistakes when filling in stripes, and also a few little tips uh, on erasing colored pencil, and what not to do when erasing. And that would be pressing, pressing really hard, thinking that as you as you scrub the eraser with a lot of pressure, it will make more of a difference, but that is not the case. It's actually the opposite. There, with the, with the darker colors on either side, you can see how much lighter uh, I actually got it with the eraser. A bit deceiving with the running out of pencil here. I need to empty this pencil sharpener. I keep getting keep getting uh, pencil shavings all over the place. This is that's how much I have left in to in order to sharpen the pencil. I, I'm really disappointed that the luminance pencils have have to be so thick. They're just like. They're literally like one millimeter too thick for me to fit in my electric pencil sharpener, uh, which is very disappointing because I would love to be able to sharpen them with that sharpener. You know, even with the uh, the white stripes here, 
uh, the black and white stripes, this, uh, this drawing will start to look quite completed after today, once I fill in all these dark stripes. How long has it been? It's, oh my gosh, how I, I know I started the live stream like 10 minutes early, like at least or something along those lines. I don't know how, I've only managed to do like five stripes uh, and I have essentially the entire shirt to do. Uh, I won't be, I, I won't be streaming past um, like a, only a little bit past two, uh, because Chrissy Extrasart, uh, many of you know her in the chat, uh, she'll be streaming with Wendy on her channel at 14.30, well 14.30 my time, I don't know what time it is for everybody in the chat, but in an hour, they'll be streaming in an hour, and I'm not going to, um, I, I won't be streaming past their stream, I'll be actually headed over to hang out with everybody in the chat on her stream today. So um, be sure to go over to her channel and subscribe if you haven't. If you've never watched a, a live stream with Chrissy and Wendy, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like watching two sisters go at it, verbally anyway. I forget what your uh, what the topic is today, Chrissy. So you'll have to remind me. Uh, let me know. Let everybody know in the chat what uh, what the what the topic is for for you and Wendy's stream today. No good cop, bad cop. Uh, doing a Q and A. Oh, okay. Well, I know, I know, Wendy's always, always giving you a hard time. So <laughs> it could be, it could be the most. Um, uh, the most somber event and she'd still be giving you a hard time about something or other. Oh, hey there, Amy. Good to see you. And uh, Lee, or Lay, Leia. Even though I have my stripes marked, I'm still uh, I'm still making sure that I have the the correct ones marked. Because you never know. 
Okay, Leia, I gotcha. <laughs> Oh, hey there, Helen. You know, when I was uh, preparing to take photos for this self-portrait, I was a little, I don't know, indecisive about what shirt I was going to wear for the photograph. And my thought process kind of went like this. I was like, well, I don't want to wear an unmask art shirt because that just feels a little a, a little redundant and then my other thought was well I also don't want to wear um, a shirt that has the the name or brand of anything else on it uh, and then I thought that leaves one shirt because <laughs> I I mean m most of my closet slash not closet, really just a dresser drawer. Um, I have shirts that pretty much either exclusively are band shirts that I go that I get from when I go to concerts. Um, and then I have a few just basic graphic tees that have like, um, I know I have a, a couple Star Wars shirts, um, and then I'm trying to think of one other one. I think just, I, I have like two Star Wars shirts. And, um, and then the rest are like band shirts. Uh, Scale the Summit, um, Intervals, Plenty. My wife hates my Plenty shirt, I love it. Um, Trying to think of what else, uh, contortionist. So I have just band shirts, and so I was left with one other option, which was this uh, striped long sleeve shirt that I got last year, um, and uh, that that's it. All of my other shirts were not where it was not uh, possible because I didn't want to do. Uh, free marketing for for anybody <laughs> and uh, yeah so I was left with like one shirt and it was this one and of course it has to be it has to have a million stripes oh I have a I have a couple um, skateboarding uh, t-shirts also so that was that was another option but uh, well not an option but that was just another type of t-shirt that I have and that's that's the extent of my wardrobe Um, don't I get sick of the background music if you always play the same? 
Are, are you saying that you're sick of the background music? Um, I don't hear the background music. In fact, I, when I'm doing my live streams, I'm sitting here in silence. I just, I'm just sitting here in silence. And the, the only thing I get to hear is my own voice. So, um, is, the, is the music too loud or something? I can turn it down if it's too loud. I mean, I could always play I, I can always play the music that I like to listen to when I draw, but uh, the live stream would be uh, flagged and not it would it would I would not be able to monetize it. And um, I probably wouldn't have too many people in the live chat, and I probably wouldn't get too many uh, too many views later on either. <laughs> I won't I won't torture anybody with uh, with my music so Oh hey there Gary and Kenny good to see you both Uh, hello, Paula. I didn't see you come in. Uh, looks like I missed a missed a few of you coming in today. Uh, watch Pokemon Detective Pikachu. What is it out? That's not fair. We don't get Detective Pikachu until the end of the month. It doesn't come into theaters until May 31st for us. You better not spoil it. Uh, I listen to metal, uh, Sergio. I listen to, to metal music. But I, I have to say that... Uh, a lot of the music I listen to is actually instrumental, so it's a bit easier for people to get into. But I do also listen to things like Born of Osiris and uh, The Contortionist and uh, The Human Abstract. So I have I have the heavy screaming side, and then I also have the lighter, the lighter more musically uh, instrumental type of, of metal, like Pliny and uh, Jakob uh, Zachetsky. Um, David Maxim. Polyphia, that's another, another good one. Chon, they're also a good a good group of guys making lovely music. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what are some of your favorite bands? Maybe we listen to some of the same same bands. Periphery, that's another one of my favorites. Uh, do I prefer Prismacolor or the Karen Dash for skin? Um, honestly, I'd rather not choose. Uh, I really, really like both of them. I've done portraits where I used 100% of Prismacolor, and I've done portraits where I use 100% of the Karen Dash. Um, and to be honest with you, they both have their positives and negatives. For instance, um, yeah, I would say, mm, I don't know, maybe 
the 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 positives with Prismacolor is that they have a wider color selection, and so it makes uh, it makes like matching certain skin tones a little bit easier. But they also have a bit of a saturation problem where their their colors tend to be a little bit um, a little bit higher on the saturation scale. Um, so getting those mid like uh, grayish tones can sometimes be a little tricky, uh, but conversely, the Caran Dash pencils they have very low. They have a, they they have a very uh, controlled saturation, so you tend to get uh, you tend to have less of the the vibrancy in the in the skin tones, but you can always get that uh, with some of the. The brighter colors that they have but you have a, a bit less of a selection both sets are really great for portraits and working on skin um, so i can't really give it to one or the other but if i had to choose i'd probably have to choose the luminance uh, simply because they'll last longer you know they have a they they are higher quality pigments so they won't they're not uh they're not prone to fading over time. So I, I have to give them this, just the slight edge on that basis alone. But I really enjoy working with the Prismacolors and they've always been, they've always kind of been my, my go-to favorite pencil. I really wish the luminance pencils weren't so thick so that I could use them in my pencil sharpener. It's a bit annoying that that all of the Caran Dash products have a different um, circumference measurement uh, of all their pencils. They're, I mean, their their pastel pencils are absolutely gorgeous, but they're so fat. It's like holding on to a telephone pole when you're using it, uh, which is unfortunate because it just makes it. It just makes it that much harder to find a way to sharpen them. They, but you can sharpen them fairly well. Not, not too difficult to sharpen them. This pencil has uh, gotten too short for me to use a pencil sharpener, so I have to use my craft knife here. Give it a little bit of a sharpen. May 10th. I swear I looked at it and it was the 31st, like the first day that it came in the theaters here. Maybe, I, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I'm thinking of another movie. Oh, I know, I know Nightwish. I used to listen to them when I was in high school. Yeah, Nightwish. Uh, they're they're a good, they're a good, um, like a classical, like a neoclassical metal, um, like opera metal, I guess. I'm not symphonic. Yeah, that is symphonic metal band. Oh, hey there, Anna. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you like the way that it's looking. Yeah, it's starting to come together. Now that I'll, I'll soon have all of the paper covered, it will look uh, a thousand times better with the paper covered. Still a long way to go. Still plenty to do. So. It being the 15th, um, I got 15 minutes. I got, somehow I'm, I'm supposed to get all that filled in 15, or not 15 minutes, but a half hour. I got about a half hour before I have to call it a day uh, so I don't cut into uh, Chrissy and Wendy's live stream. Um, so I, I have this, uh, this overwhelming feeling that I'm not going to be able to finish filling all of this in uh, in the next 30 minutes. So 
it looks like there might be a day two of filling in the dark color. Uh, but if that's the case, uh, what I'll probably be able to do then is start filling in the lighter color too. So I'll get the rest of the dark color filled in and then I'll be able to fill in some of the lighter color too. Of course, this is just the first layer of the dark color and the paper is, still shows through quite a bit, so yeah. I have a little ways. I need, I, I really want to have the shirt like completely finished um, before the 20th. I'd like, I'd like to leave, have the last 10 days or so. I'd, I'd really like to have the last 10 days or so like working out some of the, you know, the, the colors a bit more and then uh, have the last three days to doing the polishing of everything and just really get the details put in with a, a much higher degree of perfection than they are right now because they're just kind of they're just kind of slopped down and not really not really clear everything's still a little blurry no no fine details have really been put in yet so I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to check out the, the the movie theater again, Kenny. Since you said that, because if if that's the case, then I'm I might have to I might have to go into the the city center and and watch it tonight, if it is indeed out. Wednesday is date night with my wife, but uh, we haven't really we haven't really made plans today. I asked her if she wanted to go grocery shopping, and she said no. So that's that's kind of where I'm at right now with uh, Wednesday Wednesday date night. But if Detective Pikachu is playing, then we might just uh, go watch a movie. Yeah, I think I think I do have it, Anna. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm gonna make it. I feel a lot better now. You know, when it was when it was day ten and I was like still up here in the in my face area, I felt like uh, I, I kind of felt like uh, maybe I had bitten off too uh, more than I can chew, and I was like, Ugh, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be able to complete this project in a month. It would be it would be completely different if I did things off camera, but I literally don't touch this unless I'm live streaming. So I haven't I haven't done a single bit of it off off live stream. Um, so it yeah it takes it, it seems as though it takes a lot longer than it would if I wasn't sitting here talking while I'm doing it. And then also looking up as often as I can remember to, to look at the, the live chat.
Yeah, I agree. Date night is not for grocery shopping. Although, without, without grocery shopping, we're not going to eat anything for dinner today, so... <laughs> that, um... That's not going to work out. Can't keep this pencil sharp enough. The wood and the luminance pencils is a uh, a tough one to cut. They uh, they use some serious wood. The Prismacolors, when you use a craft knife to cut them, you honestly can't tell whether you're cutting the wood or the pencil core. They feel almost the same. They don't. They use pretty cheap wood in the the Prismacolors, which is actually kind of nice because it makes my electric pencil sharpener last longer when I have to sharpen a hundred of them. I, I agree, Shiny. Uh, a full fridge does look pretty good. My fridge is extra, extra empty right now. Uh, I have a few mushrooms, uh, some bell peppers, and um, a couple things that we're not eating this month, uh, which is ketchup and mustard. And then I have... Um, syrup. But I was actually I was actually thinking, um, you know, I I should I could be able to I could be able to have uh, maple syrup. It's a hundred percent organic maple syrup, and really the only thing that they do with maple syrup is they cook it. So uh, technically, it's a sweetener that is still 100% a whole food. And so I was thinking um I could I could make uh I could make peanut butter cookies. Uh because you actually only need oh wait no you I do use a little bit of flour. Mm. Maybe I could use some ground up walnuts. Like make a walnut flour. Make a uh, a, a walnut flour to thicken it up cuz you can do uh, three ingredient peanut butter cookies where you just use peanut butter, maple syrup, and flour to get the correct consistency of the cookie dough. But um, yeah, if you've if you've never tried making peanut butter cookies, you just it's just peanut butter, maple syrup, and then you add enough flour to get uh, you know to create the little uh, cookie shape in it hold its form and they're delicious Alright, um, still need to sharpen my pencil. I use one of uh, my sanders. This one 
it's just it's so frustrating having a dull pencil and when it's too short to sharpen usually usually you just give up and you use the replacement I have a replacement pencil for this color but I'm trying to trying to use it as much as I can you know go. A little bit of sandpaper goes a long way. I need to use it more on the side so that I can keep it sharp, but it's hard when it's already so short. Uh, if, if my wife and I ever visit Singapore, would you both drop by the Pokemon Center? Uh, probably. I mean, I, you know, I've been I've been thinking about going back to Singapore. I've I've been to Singapore before. It's a beautiful country. I I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved going there, uh, and you know, I've I've been wanting I've been wanting to come up with a like a vacation for my wife and I. You know, our uh, you know, we had a really, really small wedding, um, and I had to leave the country right after. I had to leave Poland right after we got married, um, because of uh, it was it was like the time frame. Uh, because before I got my residency approved in Poland, uh, I could only spend I think I want to say three months. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 90 days. Uh, I could only spend 90 days within the country. And what I had to do was every 90 days, I had to leave the, the Schengen region of Europe, which includes like Germany and Czech Republic and uh, some other countries that I don't, I don't know. But um, I could either go to the UK, I think I could go to Turkey, if I'm not mistaken, I could I could have went to Turkey as well, um, but uh, I, what I would do is I would just uh, hop on a plane uh, and spend a couple days up in London, and uh, so that's that's kind of what happened after we got married. You know, we didn't really we didn't have a vacation, we didn't go on a honeymoon or anything like that, uh, and I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to kind of surprise her with uh, like a trip somewhere, somewhere nice to go, someplace warm for sure. Um, and I was thinking somewhere around this area, you know, maybe down towards the Mediterranean. Uh, there's a few islands in the Mediterranean I was uh, thinking about. Um, and... Uh, Never, never fully committed to a, to a spot, but uh, Singapore had had come across my mind as far as a place to take her, because uh, you know she's she's not done a lot of traveling. I mean, we've been we've been to London together. We've been across the United States, um, and of course she's been to Belgium and Germany plenty of times. Uh, and we have went down to Prague before, so I, I guess maybe she's done a little bit more traveling than I make it sound. But um, I've certainly wanted to to I've always wanted to go back to Singapore after my first time being there. Uh, do I play knots and crosses on my shirt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I did. I, I think you had come in after I had made the uh, the mistake of coloring in the wrong stripe with this color, and I had to erase it. And so I went through and I put X's on all of the uh, stripes that I'm supposed to color. 
All right, Chrissy, uh, we'll see you all. Um, we'll, we'll all see you on, on your live stream in about a half hour. Oh, that's fine, Helen. I'll see you over in the live stream. Go get your food. Come to Edinburgh. Uh, is that uh, where? Is that in? Um, is that in Ireland? Or, or where is that? It's in the UK, right? Yeah, um, Kenny, what, what time of the year? I see I wanted to go on a trip during the winter time when it's winter here because one she uh, she gets a lot of time off work during that time and also it's like really cold and uncomfortable here so leaving would be like a really really great idea and I, I've always wanted to take her someplace warm during the winter Yeah, I've always wanted to go back to Singapore so that I could um, do go-karting again. <laughs> oh wait, no, that was Thailand. Never mind. Not Singapore. Sorry, don't don't mean to mix those two countries up because they are not the same thing. Singapore is much much cleaner <laughs> than Thailand. Scotland. Yeah, that was my next guess. Oh, no, I'm not. I, I can assure you, I'm not applying uh, much pressure at all. If, if I was applying any more pressure than what I usually do, uh, my hand would hurt by now. But, um, yeah. No, no excess pressure. If it appears that way, I'm not sure what's causing the appearance, but uh, I can assure you I, I'm not adding any extra pressure. Oh, I've got all this stuff around me. Uh, I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do this this stripe here. I'm gonna try to do this last stripe, uh, and then I'm gonna call it a day. And then I will see everyone over in Chrissy and Wendy's live stream. I'll uh, come over there to hang out for a bit. So I'm just going to fill in this little, this last little stripe here and uh, sign off. So uh, thank you guys all for coming by and hanging out with me today. I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, and quick reminder, tomorrow I'll be starting a new colored pencil project over on Patreon. So if you want to join me for that, we're going to be coloring a betta fish. Um, I have a link for my Patreon in the description. Of course, don't forget to give the, uh, today's live stream a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and all of that. Uh, and if you have any questions for me, uh, come back tomorrow and I'll answer any question that you have. And then for tomorrow's live stream, I will finish filling in the dark stripes 
and I might, I still have quite a bit of the dark stripes to do, but I might be able to move on to some of the lighter stripes. But one day at a time. We're almost there. We're, we're getting there. The, the paper is almost completely covered now. So, starting to come together. Starting to look like a like a shirt. Well, aren't you so lucky, Kenny, with your 24-7 warmness in Singapore? <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, everyone. Well, that's going to be it. So uh, thank you so much for coming by and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you over in Chrissy's live stream in just a few minutes. And with that, um, see you next time. Take care. Peace.